Doug Lawyer on his day off. <laughs> a little cold for golf, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. You have it wrong. You see, golf is for loners. I, however, have a date with a beautiful woman. Oh. Oh. We're going to drive up to the mountains. We're going to have a little dinner. And then... Spare us the details, son. No, no, no. You get me wrong. I was about to say we were going to spend the day of skiing. I'd invite you oh. and your ladies to join. Oh, oh, come on, I know. I would invite the two of you to bring your ladies along, but I know you'd rather keep your nose to the grindstone. Is that my exit? Yeah, the rope. Yes, okay, well, um, your wish is my command. Ciao. <laughs> Adam, send in some delectable edibles and a bottle of the bubble. Oh, forget it. Send in two bottles. Oh. Why don't you learn to enjoy and relax? I do not enjoy the idea of going to jail. I am saving you from a very, very unpleasant task. Oh, right now, Asa, I would rather be testifying in court than spend one other minute in a room with you. Pamela, you take the stand and make you talk about the ten years as Mrs. Jeb Stewart, you're going to paint me a villainous bigamist. Wow, well, that's exactly what you are. That is only one part of me, and a very small part. But you, you tell that to a judge. Clint will definitely lose custody of the kids. Asa, I do not want to take those children away from their father or their grandfather. Even though I do believe that primary custody does belong with the mother. Oh, so that says you do want to take the stand and trash me so Vicky can get the kids. No, 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 I don't. Lord, even though you are the most pig-headed, impossible husband, you are a very generous and loving grandfather. Well, why fight me? Sit tight, don't do anything. And the kids will wind up with Clint and me. Don't you understand? This has nothing to do with expediency. It has to do with right or wrong. I know that. The right thing is the kids live here. The wrong thing is Vicky take them away. That is not up to you to decide, Asa. That is up to the courts, the law. Pamela, there is a letter of the law. And there's a spirit of the law. You have to step back and see the big picture. <laughs> Lord, I can't believe it. You are now going to teach me about obeying the law? It would be my pleasure. Meanwhile, we can have some some uh, champagne and munchies, and who knows, we may enjoy each other. Now, you listen to me, Asa of Buchanan, and you listen very carefully. I do not want champagne, and I do not want munchies. I want my freedom right now, and I want it. You hear me? Now, I will give you anything you want in the world. Absolutely anything. But I'm sorry, honey. You are staying right in this room until that hearing is over and done with. Now, as the Buchanan's family physician, you're well acquainted with uh, young Joey's history of asthma. Yes, I am. And in all that time, uh, has Mrs. Buchanan ever been an obstacle to Joey's treatment? Quite the contrary. I think he's always been very vigilant when it comes to Joey's symptoms. So, you would characterize her then as a concerned, devoted mother? Absolutely. Thank goodness for Larry. Why is her pleading Vicky's case? Maybe it just sounds that way. Then it would be safe to say that the Vicky Buchanan, you know, would always respond to the first signs of trouble. To the best of my knowledge, yes. She would always have proper medication at hand to counteract any asthma attack. Yes, I believe so. Uh, does that include the most recent occurrence? I'm sorry, I, I don't follow. I said Joey's most recent asthma attack. Do you remember that? Yes, of course. I treated him at the hospital. At the hospital? Yes. Ah, is that uh, typical of uh, Joey's treatment? Is he always taken to the hospital after an attack? Well, no. But he was this particular time. Yes, but there were extenuating circumstances. I said, what were the extenuating circumstances? He needed special attention, that's what I meant. I see. Special attention, yes. <laughs> Isn't it in fact true, doctor, that uh, the special attention was necessary because Joey did not receive timely treatment at home? It was an extraordinary set of circumstances. Well, undoubtedly, and wasn't one of those extraordinary circumstances the amnesia of Joey's mother? Wasn't she unable to remember that her son even had an asthmatic condition? I was not at the house at the I time know, of the but attack. But from what you were told, doctor, 
Wasn't it extraordinary that Vicki Buchanan didn't know uh, what was happening? Didn't think to use medication, didn't have the first idea how to save her own son's life. Your Honor, Damn it, you're asking me to say something about the, one of the finest women I know, that she was a lousy mother. Well, I can't do that. Dr. Wolick, take a seat. Your Honor, I protest being called here to testify against Vicki Buchanan. Doctor, your protest has been duly noted and duly rejected. No one in this room relishes this task, but we have our obligations to the law and to three innocent children. This whole situation is being blown out of proportion. Sit down and answer the question, Doctor. We were talking of Joey Buchanan's most recent asthma attack. And Dr. Wolak, would you say his mother reacted responsibly or not? position really I am but you see we're not questioning you as a friend of either Clint or Vicky's it is your medical expertise we're at well I'm more than just a doctor Mr. Callis and I'm also a human being and I'm sorry I can't ignore the feelings of the people involved here Dr. Wolick nobody's asking you to put your feelings on hold but the court must insist that you answer these questions. Your Honor, the witness has answered Mr. Callison's question. He has stated that Victoria Buchanan never did anything and act any way to hurt her children. Mr. Sanders, the court appreciates your attempt to answer for, on the witness's behalf. However, I would like to hear the answers in his own voice, if you don't mind. Carry on, Mr. Callison. Thank you, Your Honor. About Joey's asthma. Dr. Wolick, isn't it true that his condition went undetected by his mother? Undetected because of her amnesia, undetected long enough to necessitate his being brought to the hospital. As I have stated earlier, I was not present at the time of the attack. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Dr. Wolick, you led us to believe that prior to the onset of Mrs. Buchanan's amnesia, there had never been an occasion when an asthmatic condition escalated to a life and death crisis. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. That's, as, which leads us right back to Joey's most recent bout of asthma. Now, isn't it true that when the boy was admitted to your care at Landview Hospital, he was indeed in a life and death crisis? You're putting words in my mouth. Just answer the question, please.